Kim Tobin is Michigan State University's brand new Vice President for University Advancement, and it's a pleasure to welcome her for the first time to MSU today. Kim, welcome to MSU and the program. Thank you, Russ. I've heard so much about you and the work you do and listen to your programs, and so I'm thrilled to be invited. Thanks for having me. Kind of you to say thank you. Let's start by, do you have any past experience with either MSU and or the state of Michigan? Absolutely. Uh, Growing up on the north shores of Lake Superior, I would drive through the great state of Michigan many times on the way to my grandmother's house in uh, Sarnia, Ontario, on the other side of the Blue Water Bridge in Port Huron. And my first college football game was in Spartan Stadium in 1992. Uh, my dad was a huge Spartans fan, and so he, he brought the whole family down, and I was just uh, shell-shocked on uh, what, a, what a great experience it was, and to see all the people um, and Spartans fans, that just blew me away. And then a few years later, I came. my second game was here, and it was 10-10-1998. I was with my fiancé at the time, who is now my husband of 23 years, was Michigan State versus Indiana, went into overtime, and Michigan State won. So it was very exciting and very loud and uh, just a lot of energy and excitement. So that left an impression on me. That's great. So give us a little bit of your background from when you got into the world of work and now coming to MSU. Well, maybe I'll go the other way, Russ. Um, So I've just uh, come off of 7,060 days at Colorado State and uh, working and living in Colorado for the last 19 years and four months. And uh, it's been a wonderful journey. I've done many different things working at Colorado State University that entire time, advancing from working in two different colleges to working centrally and ultimately becoming the vice president of advancement. Prior to that, I worked at two Canadian universities, and that's where I got my fundraising start. And uh, before that, I worked in the arts. My undergraduate degree is in arts management. So my the beginning of my career was working with the Toronto International Film Festival and the Art Gallery of Ontario and the Royal Ontario Museum. So those are some of my professional stints. And, you know, I've done everything else as a college student working for a furniture dealer, an engineering firm, and a restaurant. And so I have a lot of random experiences that have brought me to t- today. And what got you interested in higher education fundraising originally, and, and why do you love the work? I the My background in arts management, obviously revenue generation is of utmost importance in the arts, so um, that was interesting to learn about, but I really started working in cultural programming on campus at my alma mater, the University of Toronto. And then I was recruited by the executive director of development at the time. The university was in its uh, billion-dollar campaign in the 90s. And uh, they asked me if I'd join the team and the Great Minds for a Great Future campaign. And he assured me he'd teach me everything he knew about advancement and development. And then two weeks later, he promptly quit and went back to the private sector. So it was a sink or swim moment. And I've always been a swimmer, Russ. So I dove into the deep end and swam and swam away and have continued that career. So it's uh, it's been uh, passion and uh, leadership, um, I think, have been predisposed almost from birth into leadership roles. And so I've had great sponsors and mentors along the way that have helped me uh, learn and grow and uh, culminates in this great experience at Michigan State and being a Spartan. So now what attracted you to MSU at this time to lead advancement here? You mean beyond Sparty? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I love Sparty. What a great, great mascot program. Um, The caliber of the programs, research, the creativity, the artistry, AAU status. I think Michigan State has it all. Obviously, the athletics program and being part of the Big Ten is exciting. Um, I I love the land grant mission. I think that speaks to me and my family and my values. And so I think I can parlay some of those experiences and that um, real commitment and passion to the land grant institution um, and mission that I uh, was introduced to in Colorado at Michigan State being the the original land grant. So really feel uh, privileged to be here as part of that uh, history. And let's not assume everyone joining in on our conversation knows what advancement is. Talk about what does university advancement mean? What's the mission? 
So we, we work to advance the institution by connecting alumni and donors to an institution, um, whether it be time, talent, treasure, or testimony. Um, we work uh, with folks to keep them connected, whether it's alumni, parents, grandparents, community members, uh, connected and engaged in the great work that and is happening at Michigan State and advancing um, uh, the mission here. And it's the difference between good and great. Um, and I, uh, at MSU, the mission is defined as advancing MSU's excellence and enriching its future. And that's uh, as stated the university advancement. Who doesn't want to be part of that? Yes. And, and why is raising private dollars so important for maintaining and expanding MSU's excellence and impact? Absolutely. I touched on that a little bit earlier, being the difference maker between good and great. Uh, we uh, This is a fine institution where just being good isn't allowing us to realize our full potential. And uh, philanthropy allows us to endow funds for students and to attract the brightest uh, minds to the campus, whether it's faculty, students, facilities, all of those uh, aspects that really allow us to reach those heights of excellence and is really the uh, creates a margin of excellence for an institution. And how have advancement activities evolved over the years you've been in it? I think the um, real change I've seen over the years is the focus on donor relations and stewardship. And I feel strongly about that, that there's a moral and ethical imperative to engage our alumni and donors and to have a level of accountability and transparency in what we do at the institution, what we're doing with their funding. For a lot of people, once they make a gift, that's when the relationship really starts. And I think previously, um, there wasn't as much attention given after post-gift. And that's really important. I think that uh, we really owe that to our, our contributors, our investors, people who believe in us. Um, additionally, I've really seen uh, women have always been engaged in philanthropy, but a lot of times in the past, it was more behind the scenes. And so there's a real movement uh, to see women in philanthropy and engaging outwardly um, in the uh, whole process and as institutions, thinking about how do we engage uh, women and families in different ways. And I'm really excited to know that there's a women in philanthropy program here at Michigan State. And so you're ahead of the curve on that. I also think uh, technology and automation and data management and all uh, privacy and all of the other topics, diversity, equity, inclusion, all of the topics we are embracing and facing as a nation face the work that we do in advancement. And you've been talking about it throughout our conversation, but how would you describe your fundraising philosophy? I see this as building an opportunity to build authentic relationships based on mutual respect. Um, I think I once worked with a dean who was a philosopher and he said to his faculty, if you don't respect the person giving you a gift, then you shouldn't accept the gift. And I think that that uh, it really is at the heart of things, that there has to be a mutual interest and values alignment and interest in the work. Philanthropy is an optimistic act, even supporting disease eradication or giving somebody an opportunity that wouldn't otherwise have it. There's a, an optimism at the core of that. And I think we uh, need to think about that and remember that people believe in us to make the world a better place and um, to really inspire them with what we're we're doing that will change the world in a way that they want to see that aligns with the work we're doing. Well, as you get started at MSU and you really are just beginning, some short and long-term goals for advancement. Absolutely. We had a team meeting on Monday, my first day, which was a little interesting, uh, getting familiar with new technology, and we had almost 300 people on a Zoom call, and I um, uh, revealed my 100-day plan. I think that we have a lot of work to do. A lot of great work has already happened here, and uh, people are ready, ready to move forward. Um, so I really wanted to capture what we were going to do in the next 100 days to pivot us forward to be looking at our next campaign is, is the big opportunity out there, and how do we align with the university's strategic plan, and uh, also create a strategic plan for the division that is for the long term as well. So we're building the forever future for Spartans and for this university. So uh, a lot of planning to do and a lot of action to happen and uh, really excited to get going in this next 100 days to uh, ignite what will come after that.
And it was cool how President Stanley stopped by the meeting to welcome you on your first day, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Who doesn't want to hear from the president? That's and, right. Uh, he, he's an essential partner in this, and I'm impressed with the leadership of the institution and the provost and the deans we've had. Uh, I've had an opportunity to meet with this week, and everybody just seems ready to go. Me, too. The university is in good hands. And Well, Kim, what about both some challenges and opportunities in, in going for those goals? Well, I think right now my biggest challenge is time, Russ. I just need more hours in my day <laughs> um, to move quickly. People want to move quickly. They're ready. But we also need to spend time listening and um, thinking and reflecting on what has happened before us. And um, so balancing those two things. Um, I think there's a great opportunity to, as people are able to come back to campus. Um, so I think this reemergence from the last two years, people, nothing like coming to campus for homecoming and other events. And yet we've also learned the upside to offering virtual programming for our alumni and donors who live abroad or nationwide who want to participate. And so I look forward to working with the team to create a strategy that accomplishes and meets the needs of all people and um, all different ways to really uh, continue to advance Michigan State University. Well, Kim, thank you for letting us get to know you a little bit here on MSU today. And again, welcome to Michigan State University. Just some closing thoughts as we wrap up on what you'd like Spartans to know about you and sort of where you want to go with advancement. Thank you. Uh, what a great opportunity to be here today. I just feel like this is an absolute honor to work in, in the advancement world. I'm at the nexus between a great institution and wonderful people who care and want to make a difference. I take that as a real um, honor and privilege and so look forward to serving alongside everybody else who's been here before me and all those who will join us along the way. So uh, with that, go green. Go white. And that's Kim Tobin, Michigan State University's Vice President for University Advancement. You can find out more at advancement.msu.edu. And I'm Russ White. This is MSU Today.